Closed captioning of this program is brought to you by Slimers in Organic Flesh Bait. Fish hit hard and often with Slimers. Traveling throughout Israel and fishing saltwater on this strip, we've been down on the Red Sea on the Mediterranean, literally from one end of Israel all the way north, almost the Lebanon border. I was pleasantly surprised to see that the number one lure are the Rapala lure lines in the storm, in the crankbaits. Now what I'm holding up here are the deeper diving lures. One is made out of plastic, and you can see that it has the name. This one's had a few fish rip at the name. This is the x raft Deep. You can see a number 20 there. That means that it dives to 20 feet. So that, that's why it's got this long lip. This particular one has a chartreuse lip with an orange color. So it's very good, dives down with about a 100 foot lead to 20 feet deep. The other lure that I'm holding in my hand is really the staple for saltwater fishing. And it's called the Rapala Magnum. And this particular one is the number 14. That means that it's 14 centimeters long. And the first thing that should hit you is that the lip is not clear and colored. You can see it's a metal lip. Sometimes in clear water, when you're going after feeding fish that are feeding on silver bait fish, the silver flash that's produced from that lip is very important as that lure goes from side to side. So this lure will dive down to about 15 feet, this one to about 20 feet. You can see that both lures are equipped with cadmium treble hooks. So these are salt water hooks. The other thing, they're designed for big fish. Notice the rings, they're not split rings, they are welded rings. So once they install these on the lures, they're welded and you can't pull them off. So even if you have a fish that head shakes a lot, like the king mackerel that we've been landing, they won't be able to take your snap or your knot off the lure. So these are two very good choices of lures to use if you're planning to do any trolling in salt water for some of the larger game fish. Now, Barb, you've been to Israel like 20 times, right? Yes, I have. We've been to Israel four together. This has got to be the most interesting trip, you got to admit, right? Uh, yes, the fishing part is like amazing. And seeing all of Israel going, literally we've covered together with our guide and some of the other people that are in our group, 2,000 miles in Israel. 2,500 miles. 2,500 was it? I think so. Amazing. That's a lot of miles. So we've had a chance to fish the Red Sea for Giant Trevally. We tried for some tuna. And now we're out here fishing with our good friend JJ, who's just Hello. holding on to his fish so Barbara can land hers. And he, he prepared for three days. Were you praying for three days, JJ? Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> Actually, well tell him the truth. I went to the front of the boat. You were praying at the front of the boat. Yeah. So that we would get more fish. So we've got lots of fish. Holy land, no? Yeah, you're doing good. Now once you get a fish on top of the water like this, it's really important to keep him up so he doesn't go into the other lines. You're doing great, Barb. Careful okay. when we when one of the skippers are going to flip the boat, the fish in. Don't let him go down, Do Barb. Do I have another yeah. line Keep attached? Him. No, no, you don't. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Bring him in. Bring him in. We'll worry about the other line later. Okay, Roger's sneaking in there. He's probably going to grab it and then just watch out when it hits the floor. Keep reeling, Barb. Reel, reel, reel. It's a good size eating fish. Keep reeling. Keep reeling. Good. They gaffed it. And it's careful. Watch those hooks. Good. If you can just hold him there for one second. Barbara, you had them just by the back one treble, which is perfect. These fish have so much energy. And in a minute here, if he slows down, I just want you to look at his teeth. Be very careful, Roger, with that hand. You can see all the teeth that he's got. If I can grab, can you grab my glove for one minute, David? It's right there. I'm gonna hold its tail still. Yes, Roger, this is a very good glove. It's made out of stainless steel and Kevlar. The hook can go in the glove. Careful if you goes to jump off. Okay, I just wanted to hold him still so you can see his teeth. And we got to be careful, Barb, that we don't get blood on us. You okay. can see how razor sharp those teeth are. That's one of the reasons why we're using 40 pound test wire leader. So this guy's actually a perfect eating size. So he's by no means a trophy. And it's good to take these fish for eating. And I think this is like our six fish that we're going to have in the box. Okay, JJ, do you have the pliers or do you want to grab mine out of my pocket yep. right here? Dave's trying to get my attention. I'll show you what kingfish do if you don't have wire on. This is, they've got tough mouths. And we're gonna get the other one out, yep. Okay, we're gonna open the box. And have you got it? Roger, okay, I'll let you put it in the box. Now this is what David, JJ's brother, was showing me. Look, 
This is fluorocarbon, looks like 60, 50, 60 pound, right, JJ? Yes, yeah, yeah. And you can see the way it's been cut. Fluorocarbon is much harder than monofilament, but you know what? For the kingfish, it's very wise to go to wire. And some of the at least 40 pound wire or even heavier because they've got such sharp teeth. The problem is not that they're going to grab the lure and the leader. It's when you're fighting them and they head shake, very often that their teeth will hit the leader or sometimes another kingfish will come by and either hit the swivel because he thinks it's a minnow from the silver flash or he'll come by trying to get the lure out of the one fish's mouth and cut the line. So it's very wise to use wire. We are now in Yad Vashem, which is the eternal memorial for the Jewish people. Along this whole area, you would be able to see plaques. When we'll go through, you're going to see the trees that are here. These trees are the carob trees, which are the boxer, which are a symbol of life, a symbol of continuity. And right over here, we want to give a token of appreciation to those people that helped us survive and helped Israel come alive. 